Hi, it's Dr. Crone again. In this video, we're going to explore the four political functions of the news media. You'll find more information on these functions in your reading assignment for this unit. The four functions are signaling, common carrier, watchdog, and partisan. We'll talk about each one of them in turn, and I'll give you examples, both recent and historical, to help aid your understanding. Signaling is the most basic function the media serves. It tells citizens what is important just by putting a news story in front of our eyes. It's the answer to the question, what's going on? You might not think much of this function, but consider that every day millions of events are unfolding around us, many of them with political significance. The media have to choose which ones to report on. By choosing an event and showing us a news alert like this one, it tells us to pay attention. Today, we have instantaneous nationwide signaling. In the past, a presidential rally in Kansas would have only been news in Kansas. But today, the media alert all of us to events like this. The 24-hour news cycle of cable news stations and news websites means that we learn about events in real time without having to wait until the next morning's newspaper or the six o'clock news show. This function can also be called agenda setting. Have you ever talked to friends or coworkers about what's going on in the news? If so, you've been affected by the agenda set out by news organizations. They communicated to you the importance of a topic and you reemphasize that by talking to others about it. All this happened because of the signaling function of the media. The media practice the common carrier function when they simply carry the words of a politician or other well-known person without any commentary. The best example is a direct broadcast of a speech or a news conference. When a president gives a State of the Union speech, almost all video media outlets carry the speech live and unedited. This allows the president to speak directly to the American public without having a reporter decide what to emphasize or how to comment on it. Ten years ago, we really only saw common carrier functions happening with political speeches. But today, social media like Twitter provide politicians with a means to communicate directly to the American people without any reporter filtering their message. So Twitter, and to a lesser extent Facebook and other services like that, are really the new frontier of the common carrier function. President Trump has changed the face of political media use by using Twitter very skillfully to communicate directly with his followers and to cement his popularity among his base. The news media carries out their watchdog function when they practice what's called investigative journalism. This means that they're researching and publishing facts that political leaders or other prominent people are trying to hide. The most famous case of watchdog journalism happened in the 1970s when Carl Bernstein and Bob Woodward of the Washington Post found evidence that President Nixon was covering up his involvement in a crime. A more recent example was the investigation by several reporters from the Boston Globe into the cover-up practiced by the Catholic Church in Boston. Reporters discovered that the leaders of the church had been hiding evidence of priests sexually abusing children for decades. This is the watchdog function. In many ways, it's the most important job of the media in a free country. Because of freedom of the press, the government and socially important people and institutions cannot stop the media from investigating and reporting on these types of scandals. This allows citizens to learn things about their government and society that the government would prefer they not know. This freedom is one of the important characteristics that distinguishes a democracy from an authoritarian system where the government controls what the media is allowed to report. The news media fulfills the partisan opinion function when they specifically advocate for a policy or voice an opinion about whether something is good or bad. This article from the LA Times is easy to identify. It clearly states opinion at the top, along with the words op-ed, which stand for opinion editorial. This tells the reader that they're about to read the opinion of the writer and not just straight news. Straight news reporting just tells the facts and leaves the analysis and opinion up to the reader. 
opinion or editorial articles try to tell the reader or viewer what to think. 20 years ago, it was simple to tell if an article or video clip was opinion. It would have been clearly stated just like this article is. However, times have changed and it's harder than ever to tell the difference between opinion and straight news reporting. Fox News, MSNBC, and CNN all feature news shows that are blends of opinion and straight news. Reporters like Tucker Carlson on Fox and Rachel Maddow on MSNBC host hour-long shows that are mostly opinion, with some news reporting mixed in. The existence of these kinds of shows has given Fox, MSNBC, etc., the reputation of being biased. They're considered to be biased because they rely heavily on the partisan opinion function of the media. But just because these media companies do have a specific partisan slant much of the time does not mean that everything they publish or report is a partisan function. For example, this article from Fox News is straight news reporting about a speech that Speaker of the House Nancy Pelosi gave that was critical of some Democratic members of Congress. So you can't just assume that the news from any particular source, even if it's Fox or MSNBC, is all partisan function. Further, just because a straight news article presents politicians in a negative light does not mean that it's biased or that it is fulfilling the opinion function. The Watergate stories certainly showed a negative side of Nixon, but that didn't make them partisan. It's easy to get mixed up here if you're not thinking carefully enough about a news article. To add to the difficulty, these days, newspaper websites like the New York Times and the Washington Post make it harder than it used to be to figure out whether an article is opinion or not. For example, this headline, Who Protected Jeffrey Epstein, sounds like it could be investigative reporting, which would be straight news. But if we look closer, we can see that this article is labeled as opinion and is written by the editorial board, which is a group of leaders at a newspaper who run the paper and publish editorials that state the newspaper's opinions. Citizens today have to be careful and savvy consumers of the news to figure out what is partisan and what is straight news reporting. It's an important critical thinking skill. Try practicing it the next time you're looking for a current event article. Be sure that you're finding straight news rather than an opinion. We've come to the end of our discussion of the four functions of the mass media. Take a moment to pause here and reflect on what you've learned. Try to list the four functions by memory. Jot down what each of them means in your own words. This will be good practice for the next quiz and the next essay assignment. I hope you've enjoyed learning more about the role of the news media in American politics. As always, good luck with your work this week.